Well, we welcome everyone. It's good to see all who are with us here this morning. We welcome you on this day, the 14th day of June 2020. Seems like time just keeps on flying by. I can't believe we're in the sixth month of a, of a year. It seemed like yesterday we were celebrating the new year, and now it's six months later. But we do welcome everyone. It's good to see all with us, and we welcome all who are online and looking and watching with us as well. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship, hymn number 14, Praise to Lord the Almighty, in our opening prayer. <clears throat> together this morning. Lord, if we sing a song like this, I truly, truly hope that each and every one here does praise you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, I pray that this world and these times that are going on and the things that are going on, that there will be a revival, Father, that people will turn to you. With all the stuff that's going on, we understand and we believe that we know that you are with us, that you are watching over us, that you are keeping us. I thank you, Lord. I pray for each one that's not here this morning. I know, Father, we probably have some that are working. We might have some that are sick or some that are away. Uh, bless them. Bless all your churches this morning, Father. Watch over us, guide and direct us all. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Be seated. In the way of announcements, just a few things that are taking place and a few things that are going to be happening, of course. Next Sunday is indeed Father's Day, so um, people, I guess, will be doing different things now with the COVID-19 going on as far as when it comes to Father's Day celebration or whatever the case may be. So, but next Sunday is uh, the celebration and remembrance of Father's Day. Uh, then next month be July the 4th, uh, Independence Day, of course, and this falls on a Saturday. So be aware of that. So probably, probably if you, wherever you're working, they may uh, probably take off on a Friday to Saturday before. Uh, in honor of the 4th of July, so be aware of that. Again, until further notice, there's no Sunday school, Wednesday night Bible study, or uh, little church, uh, or different other things that are going on. 
Um, this coming Wednesday is a special day for a couple for a couple that will be celebrating their anniversary this coming Wednesday. Renee and Danny Bryan will be celebrating their anniversary this coming Wednesday, so congratulations to both of them. Um, in the back on the table, there is the financial report for Bayou Baptist Church for May. If you would like to have one and take it home, you can look at it. If you have any questions, please ask. I don't doesn't matter what kind of question it may be. You may think it's not a good question, but any question is, is good. Um, you can either call Renee or you can call myself, uh, and we can maybe try to explain if you have any questions on the financial report, uh, the expenditures, or anything else that may be on there. So that's in the back, so if you can remember, take one as you leave, and you can look at it at your leisure as well. Uh, again, you can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Any other announcements or anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else going on or taking place? Um, I think now, officially, we're in phase two of this uh, virus that's going on. So in some places, it's like 50% of the occupancy. Uh, but there are still other places, even though it's 50%, there are still other places that are not allowed to be open, still, even at 50%. So be aware of that. Um, I do know uh, many of our restaurants in Slidell are open, and they do have limited capacity due to that. But then there are some restaurants that are still doing just a drive through or pickup. So be aware of that as well. Not all restaurants are open for dining. So uh, just because it's 50%, it doesn't mean that maybe that restaurant decided, okay, we're still gonna do curbside or we're still gonna do just a drive-through. So be aware of that. I do, I do know many of your McDonald's and other fast foods, they still doing drive-through or pickup uh, curbside. So just be aware of that if you going around and looking for some place to eat as far as dining in and what's taking place with that. Anything else? If not, Mr. Howell will come and lead us in our second hymn and another hymn, hymn number 44, For the Beauty of the Earth. <coughs>
prayers and requests and concerns, I ask you to continue to remember and to pray for these different uh, people and also organizations that we continually pray for. The men and women in the military and their families, Christian missionaries throughout the world that are providing gospel, and many others here as well. I've added a few others that I ask you to to pray for. Some of you may or may not have heard, uh, but I would like for you and for us to pray for Nicole Porter. Miss Nicole Porter is at University Hospital and she has leukemia. And she is being treated at University Hospital as we speak. She will be there quarantined and everything and getting treatments for uh, leukemia. So remember her in prayer. I'm sure as well as her mom and dad, Anita and Wayne, and then the Gibson family, Bill and Nell as well, as well as Victor Jr. Uh, so do, do pray and remember them in prayer. Uh, pray for the Contreras family, Victor Sr. and Cynthia and them, and remember them in prayer, especially Cynthia. She, she has a, a big job. She basically taking care of all of the, uh, the grandkids lately, and also um, little baby too that belongs to Nicole so they're all over there and uh, Cynthia's the one taking care of all of them so remember her remember them in prayer and pray for them during this very difficult time uh, in their lives to where um, hopefully uh, this can be overcome and hopefully with treatment and everything else um, uh, we can have a positive outlook and a positive outcome on it so Again, just pray for Nicole and pray for the family and pray for all involved with that. So do remember them. Um, <clears throat> continue to remember, of course, Johnny Garrett and Debbie Garrett in prayer. Johnny with his ongoing battle and his treatment for cancer. Uh, so do pray for him and pray for them and, and what they deal with and the new treatments that he has got to, uh, he's going to be treated with and what's going to be taking place, of course, with him. On our prayer list, we have different people, again, that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. I'd ask you to continue to pray for them and remember them in prayer. Uh, Ginger's sister May, she fell again and hurt herself. Uh, was this the second or the third time? Third time, yes. So she it seemed like she's continually falling and hurting herself, so just pray for May. We remember her in prayer, as, as well as uh, Melissa and Lisa in prayer, and G and the family. So just pray for them and remember them also in prayer and what she too is dealing with. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to do. Uh, Janet asks us to continue to remember Candace in prayer. Uh, Candace is being treated herself and her blood platelets were kind of low. Is that right? Yeah, so do pray for uh, Candace. Uh, in prayer and, and what she too is dealing with with her cancer. So remember her also in prayer. Other prayer requests. So thank you. My prayer thanksgiving. My my grandbaby was born. He was nine days old today. Oh good. Congratulations. Xander Allen. Seven eight. What's his name again? Xander. Xander. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Xander. Okay. Good. Real time. <laughs> oh good. And then um, mom's doing good. Um, good. FaceTime her and FaceTime her a couple of days ago. Okay. She's um, she's doing good. She's going to hear nails on the face. Okay. Real good. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Then she kind of misses us, but when we talk to her, she doesn't like um, act like she hasn't talked to me or seen me. So. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I know. I can go. And go a week and then I call her and she's like, hey, you know, I said, she said, it's my daughter. She can tell people, right? It's my daughter. So she forgot who the daughter is. That's good. That's good. We just continue. I have no idea when we're going to be able to see her. I know it. I know it. Thank God we can face her. That's good. That's good. Makes me feel better. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And, and officially now, Linda has retired from Walmart. So. If you try to go in Walmart and parts of train, she's no longer there. No, they, they call me all the time. I've had two or three of them call me. Mm, they do. 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 They do.
also doesn't have any cases. They um, they actually got the kids to start checking them. Sure. And they had their call to get my permission, but it wasn't for that. Right, yes. But anyway, um, they still don't have any cases. Well, good, good. That's so a great thing, yes. I'm so thankful for that. Right. Um, if y'all run across any kind of like canned Lysol, <laughs> and, um, I, I brought up three cans when I was working at Walmart because I could get it, you know, like out of the back room when it came in, sneak one out every now and then. But um, I went to the dollar store, then they get some, but they didn't get any in. So I get their shit was on Friday, so hopefully I can get them a couple more cans. And Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think I've got six, seven cans since it's all the started. Yes. So yes. It's like, but yeah. I don't have to finish anymore. Yeah. That's right. See, so the first thing I hit, two things I hit when I go there, one is, is that place, and there's none on the shelf, so. None. Yeah, none, zero, so yes. So, yes. Hopefully they'll start making it sooner. I hope so. I hope so, yes. Other prayer requests. Brandy. What is night shift? Uh, this week. I no, what is night shift? What time? I'm sorry. The time frame. I mean, no, I mean, <laughs> so night shift sometimes can, can be at 8 o'clock at night to 1 in the morning. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. That, that's my point. I mean, night shift, I know, is after, but not some people do you know, night shift, like with Danny Bryant. You know what night shift is for him, huh? It's like from 11 to 7. That night shift. Well, it used to be. Now it's really second shift. Or you can go to more work till 2.30. Yeah, 2.30 in the morning. So different people have different things when it comes to night shift. But now he did work from 12 to 12 at one time. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's been a wonderful hour today. It's only two shift, like 16 hours a day. Yes. Yeah. But we'll remember you in prayer with the night shift on the branding. Sure will. Absolutely. Ginger. Uh, Frank, along with uh, praying for me, the really needs it. Um, she is having a lot of problems with his legs okay. and also his arms. And I think it's even more serious than that because when they fell, he tried to help the girl. Yes. He couldn't even breathe. Um, he couldn't do it. He, he okay. Like, totally out of okay. Remember him, he's like, what, 93 years old? 97? 97, 97 years old. And, and, uh, and also Casey. He had heard his shoulder, dislocated his shoulder. Uh, they, I think they operated on him, but he's still having a lot of problems. Is that right? He's the one that had to pick me up. Oh, wow. And that didn't help. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that, okay? But just, you know, remember, remember both of them in prayer, the whole family, yes. Yeah, the whole family. We sure will. May, G, Casey, yes. And, and traveling versus Zach, I'm not, I didn't talk to him when he leaves, but um, he's just having a hard time. When do you leave, Zach? Okay. See, here's Zach. He's right behind you. <laughs> you like that, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> so I can use up there and there's Zach smiling to you. Uh, yeah, I was hoping he wouldn't be, but... <laughs> <laughs> he was hoping he wouldn't be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but yeah, always, always, yes. On the prayer request. Uh, just keep Karen in prayer. Yes. Okay. 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 All right, we'll keep her in prayer. Janet? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Amen. Amen. I agree with that. Yes. All we have is today. That's right. Yes. So be thankful for every day. That's right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Other prayer requests. Anyone, anyone else or anything else? Just pray for each other. Remember each other in prayer as well. 
And again, just pray for those that are struggling, going through difficulties, whatever may be going on. We have quite a few people that are still, you know, um, dealing with the uh, COVID-19 thing and uh, staying indoors and not doing much of anything as far as uh, uh, with people or with anything else. And that's okay if that's what they feel like, okay, they want to do. Just pray for them, pray for everyone. Pray for our country. Sadly, another incident, as you've not heard or not seen, another incident took place in Atlanta. And I saw the video of that and I was just dumbfounded, I'll be honest. And I, I was just beside myself. And, and I'll be honest, I, I, I'm like the rest of them. There was no reason for this person to be shot by the police because the man did not have a gun. They could have subdued him without any serious violence. Uh, from what I saw, um, and, I'm, and, I'm, and it, it breaks my heart when I saw it, I just couldn't believe two officers there couldn't contain one person without fatally shooting the person. It was just, I'm sorry, it was just unnecessary. It was. And so it just adds more fuel on the fire to what we see happening in our country and what's taking place now. And so now pray for the people in Atlanta because now there's protests and there's other things that be taking place in Atlanta uh, due to that and it just propels it and doesn't help uh, the situation of what we see happening um, in our country. You know, so just pray. And that's it. And, and I agree with that. Yes. I do too. I do too. Yes. 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 Well, well that's it. And, and not all policemen, regardless of their race, are the same way. That's right. That's right. They're not. And, and you know some. Janet knows some. I know some. And, you know, many of us maybe know some. And they're not that way. But unfortunately, the few. And this is what happens. Yes, and it's just, exactly, yes, yes, I agree, I agree. Like I said, it's, uh, from what I saw in the video, and I watched it a couple of times, and I just shook my head, I just couldn't believe it as well. It was just like, really? I mean, two strong men, you just, you know, there's another one. I think part of it, too, is that people aren't really thinking anymore. Right. Because everybody's running on the mentality, and it's a mob mentality. It is. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. You know, yes. and everybody's scared, and because they're scared, it's, it's just making it worse. It is. It is. But pray for our country, and what the country really needs is the Lord. This is what's missing. This is the missing element in all of this, is the fact that the Lord is not present in the lives of, the, of these people. And this is what, what is needed in order to make things right, in order to have real peace and unity and harmony, it begins with a relationship with the Lord. And this is what this, this is how it all begins. And unfortunately, we don't see that. So just pray for all people uh, in law enforcement, as well as people, firemen, policemen, whomever they may be dealing with, uh, with all of this. Pray for our government what's taking place within our government as well. Just lift them up in prayer and pray for them as well. Um, give thanks to the Lord for answered prayer. Even if the answer is no, or even if the answer is wait, give thanks to the Lord for his prayer. He has a reason as to why things are allowed and done in our lives. Not every prayer that we want will come as we think it should, but according to his will and what he wants. Remember, when Jesus prayed, he says, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And this is what we need to pray. I know it's hard sometimes to pray for that, especially when you're going through physical problems and ailments and different things are happening in your life. Still pray the same thing. Lord, your will be done may not understand it all, but your will be done. And that's what we need to continue praying. Again, give thanks to Lord for answered prayer and pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be. I don't care who they are. They could be your worst enemy. 
Pray for them. And the, and the proof in the pudding, if God can change Paul, he can change anyone. Remember, he said, I am the worst of all sinners. Now, when I get there, I'm going to disagree with him. Me and him are going to go round for round with that. I'm the worst. But he felt, you know, I know, but we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a discussion, okay? Okay, how about that? We, me and him, are gonna have a discussion, say, what's that? No, it's gonna be no. We have a nice no. We can, you see, that's the good thing when you're there, you can have good discussions inside. Yes. Oh no, not get mad. That's right. You can have discussions. You can have talks. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And remember now, there's there are seven gates. So I don't know which one I'm gonna go with. There are seven gates that get you into heaven that you can walk through. And they're all open. There's no, there's no gates. All it is is a gate. You just walk right through. You read it yourself. It's all open. It's awesome. So anyway, let's go, Lord, and pray. Almighty God, as we come before you, Lord, this morning again, Lord, we do thank you for your many, many blessings. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together this morning to worship, praise, and glorify you. Lord, we lift up all the prayer, all the concerns, and many things that have been voiced here this morning that you have heard. And Lord, as you look down, you, you have seen all the things that are going on in our world. And Lord, I know you're just shaking your head and saying, why won't they ever learn? But Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for the people. We pray for the social injustice that is being done by the few people, Lord, that is making things bad and ugly. And Lord, we lift up all and everyone before you. And we ask, Lord, for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. Lord, we pray for those that are dealing with different health issues and health health problems. Some are here, some at home, some in the hospital, and many in nursing homes. We lift them all up, the friends, the family, and all. Lord, we especially lift up Nicole Porter as she is dealing with leukemia. We pray and lift her up as well as her family, Anita, Wayne, Billy, Nell, Victor Jr., Victor Sr., Cynthia, and many others as well. We lift them all up and we ask for your help, grace, and mercy in her life as well as in their lives as well. Lord, we, we pray for the many other people. Candace, who is also dealing with cancer. Johnny Garrett, who is dealing with cancer. We lift these up. We pray for Mae DeMall and her ailments and what she's dealing with, as well as G and Casey and many others as well. And again, some here, again, that are dealing with different health issues. And we lift them all up and we pray for them. Lord, we pray for stability that may come in our country. And we pray that you'll help us and be with us as we journey. We pray for those that are dealing with people, Lord, that may or may not have the Corona-19 and people, not just the, those dealing up front like doctors or nurses and others, but also the firemen, ambulance workers, policemen, and others who are working uh, there in close proximity with them, those working in nursing homes, and others as well. Be with us now, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And Lord, we pray for salvation. We pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, whomever they may be. And we pray for their hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us stand at this time as Al comes and he leads us in our offertory hymn, 412. My faith has found a resting place.
Almighty God, again, we come before you, Lord, and we just thank you for your many, many blessings. Lord, we come now and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that you will see to it in all this good, that it's used for the furtherance of your kingdom for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus, amen. God, let me share with you a very, very familiar passage, and I mean, him, and one that goes along with what we want to look at today, coming from Genesis chapter 5, looking at the somewhat life of Enoch, and also with this psalm too, and you'll recognize it, and it's a very familiar one, but one that we need to continually do as well. It's just a closer walk with thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. Oh, as I walk, let me walk close to thee. So walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Oh, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and stare. If I falter, oh Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? Oh, none but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. day. Okay. 
in our lives. If you have your Bibles, <clears throat> we're going to be looking at three passages today, looking at, uh, as we celebrate, and we're going to celebrate next Sunday, Father's Day, looking at a father that we know very little about, but yet one, we see who a father who walked with God. Enoch had many sons and daughters. We don't know the names of the other sons and daughters, but we do know the name of his first son, Methuselah. It's in, his, in his day, it was tough being a godly father, teaching, training his children to follow the things of God when there were very, very few people that were doing that. So today, let us, by God's grace and power, uh, read a little bit and see about a man who stuck to his godly principles and gave it as a pattern of his life to his own children as well. First, from Genesis chapter 5 and verse 21 through 24. <clears throat> Here it's recorded from us from the Word of God. When Enoch, who had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and then he was no more because God took him away. Can you imagine? When Enoch was 65 years old, he gave birth to his, or his wife gave birth to their firstborn son, Methuselah. Now how old was Methuselah when he died? 969 years old. Recorded probably the oldest person that lived. Uh, but we see after the birth of his son, notice it says, for the next 300 years, Enoch walked with God. Now what does that mean? Walk with God. He walked with God. Not for just five years, not just for 10 years, for 300 years, he walked with God. Did the responsibility of raising sons and other children and daughters in a godless world challenge Enoch that he knew he needed help from the Lord to raise his child, children? Notice it says, after Methuselah was born, he began to walk with God. Did he see the miracle that was performed there and the birth of his son? He gave praise and glory to God and then he said, God, I need help. I need help to raise this child and others that may come as well. For 300 years, it said he walked with God. Did God give Enoch the insight about the future and what would happen after his firstborn arrived? We don't know. He may, may not have, concerning the different things or what was going to take place in the future. We don't know the different things, but we do know, and it seems as though when we read this, that this changed his life dramatically. He decided, I'm going to walk with God. And do you know that there are only, it's remarkable, as I searched it, and you can too later, there are only two men in the Bible that is recorded, that has made that statement, that where it says, Enoch walked with God, and he was no more. Or when it says that Enoch walked with God, there's only another man that has mentioned that he walked with God with God. Now, there are many people in the Bible, both the Old and New Testament, that indeed walk with God. It's recorded in the Word of God that he walked with God. Who was the other person 
where it's recorded where it says, he walked with God. Does anybody have any idea who would that other person be? It's Noah. In the, ne in the next chapter. For you see in Noah, it says in, in Genesis chapter 6, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. And I look specifically throughout the Bible for where it says, okay, and he walked with God. And that was the only place, I, two places I found. Not that the other people didn't. I'm sure Abraham did, Job did, David did, Daniel did, Jeremiah did, you know, and many others. But, but that was the only two, remarkably to me, where it says, he walked with God. Uh, again, I'm not saying anything about it. It's just amazing to me as, as I thought about that and saying, okay, he walked with God. And here we see where Enoch, 300 years he walked with God. Now, that means he held up God's principles, God's, God's values, and did what so many in his day did not do. And, didn't, and, and to them, it seemed like it was not important. But to him, it was important as far as all of that. And then it says he was no more. There's a story that was told by a little girl, by her Sunday school teacher, concerning Enoch and what took place. She was... She asked the Sunday school teacher, what does it mean when it says that Enoch walked with God and he was no more? And this is the story that the little girl told her mother that was told to her by a Sunday school teacher. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but we don't have any recorded or anything. I thought it was interesting. It says Enoch lived a long time ago. And God would come by every afternoon and say to him, Enoch, would you like to take a walk with me? And Enoch would say, yes, I'd like to take a walk with you, God. So every day, God would come by Enoch's house, and they would go walking, he would go walking with God. Well, one day, at the end of the 300 years, God came to him and said, Enoch, let you and I take a long walk today. So, he says, I, I want to talk to you about some things. So they started out. Before they started out, Enoch got his coat, took his lunch, and they started walking. And they walked, and they walked, and they walked a long way from home. And then Enoch said, you know, we better be getting back. It's getting late. So God said, you know, Enoch, you're closer to my home than, than you are to yours. So why don't you just come home with me? And so Enoch went home with God. That was a story that was related to the little girl in the Sunday school, or the Sunday school teacher. Like I said, it's nothing that we can record as far as how that happened. All we know is that it says that Enoch walked with God, and he was no more because God took him away. Amazing, isn't it? As far as what takes place here. But he walked with God. And, and it's amazing with Enoch and what took place with him. So here we see in Genesis chapter 5 that Enoch made it his privilege as well as his, um, you could say, his honor to walk with God 300 years. You know, I don't know about you, but I try to walk with God just for one hour. And sometimes it's hard and it's difficult. For 300 years, this man walked with God did these things. And then over in Hebrews, we get a little bit more information. In Hebrews chapter 11, and in verse 5 and 6, here also it's recorded for us from the Word of God concerning Enoch. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, however, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him 
must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Amazing. By faith, we see Enoch, he walked with God. And God, it says, was pleased with Enoch. Why? Because Enoch believed God's word and he was an example of godly values and this is even before the Ten Commandments were given. This is before anything else was done. And yet, here we see God looked down. He smiled a big smile when he saw how Enoch had put into practice the things that he, that was of God, the value the godly principles. In other words, Enoch didn't compromise. He didn't quit when everyone else was quitting. Again, God was pleased with Enoch walk. You know, he was one of two men that was raptured up. You could say Enoch was the first person to be raptured up. Who was the second? Elijah. And that chariot. Oh, I'd like to go to the chariot. <laughs> chariot, yeah. That looks nice. We don't have chariots today. So, but anyhow, he, he was the first one raptured up. Now, he was not raptured up because of his good works. Let's not make that a point of anything. But because of his faith in the one true God. For well, you see, salvation is still the same from beginning to end. It is by faith that you are saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. According to Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. I, re I recite that m many times from the pulpit here. And we have to understand, Enoch was raptured up and went to heaven not because of his good works, his good principles, his good values, but because of his faith in the one true God. He believed God. Notice, what does it say? Without faith is it impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that reward, though, and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Enoch sought the things of the Lord more than the things of the world. He did not allow the world and the things of the world to compromise those values, those principles as well. And I believe that he taught these principles and these values to his children as well. Not only Methuselah, but his other sons and his daughters. And I think to other people as well. He walked 300 years in a world that was wicked, that was evil. We see, but well, by the time Noah at 500 years came around, it was really, really bad. But it was getting worse, it was getting worse day by day, year by years, as far as the people there in the times of from Enoch all the way to Noah. And he walked in this world and he walked 300 years among the people who were ungodly, who were wicked. And also, do you realize that these same people that God created broke God's heart? Broke God's heart. It tells us in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 6, the Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. Imagine breaking the heart of God. He who created us from the dust of the ground and breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. And yet, it says he grieved God. He taught, again, he taught his children the precious values, not just by words but by action. 
you know, many people may say many things concerning godly things, but it's not so much the words you speak, but it's the action. It's what you do. And I think for 300 years he did that. He just didn't preach it, but he lived it. He did it. Now, Eli's life of faith was not private. Let's, let's face it. Everyone knew, I think, that he was a man who walked with God. A man who was of God as well. Again, his faith did not waver in the midst of all the others who did compromise and felt, well, you know, it's okay if I do these things over here, it really won't hurt anybody. Or if I do these things over here, nobody's really going to see or know anything. Not Enoch. He did not compromise. Let me tell you, you think that people don't see the things that you do or not do and you say, well, I can compromise and nobody, they see. You know, we think that children don't see the things that we do as grown-ups when we're raising our kids. They do. I've been told this many times to my children. They do see us. They do. They see. And other people see as well. Even people you don't think are seeing, they're watching you. And they're seeing things. And they hear the things that you say and do. And you are an example to them, be it good or be it bad. Enoch was an example, not just to his children, but to the corrupt world that he lived in. He was there. Whether he made a difference in some people's lives, we will never know. But it didn't matter. Because you see, to him, it was more important keeping the values of godly things than the things of this world. How long are we going to be in this world? Now, none of us are going to live to be 300 years. None of us are going to live to be 969 years. We're lucky if, no, I guess, I don't know if we call it lucky, but if we live, maybe 60, 70, 80, 90 years, no more than that, you know, in this world, short time. You know, some people are not as fortunate to live as long as many of us here today have been living. And we're blessed to live this long. But God has a plan and a purpose for all that. Yet again, he did not compromise anything. And again, remember what it says in Hebrews. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Having faith in the one true God. See, salvation comes by faith. A Christian walk comes by faith. You see, our walk, we have to have a lot of faith. When Peter denied Christ three times, and prior to that, when they were in the garden, what did Jesus, remember, what did Jesus tell Peter as he was, they were talking? And they said, none of them said they're going to deny them. And he said, uh, he said all of them were going to deny them, even Peter. But he said, and he, and remember, and he told Peter, he said, Peter, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you, Peter. I have prayed for your faith. Your faith. And when you have turned back, help the other disciples as well. You see, faith is important in our life. And not just any faith, but faith in the one true God through Jesus Christ. That's where it comes from. Why is it that we just keep on going, even when we're going through physical problems or we're going through other things as well, financial problems or other things? Because of our faith in the one true God that comes through Jesus. No, Enoch walked with God by faith. God was pleased with what he saw in the life of Enoch. Enoch walked with God. 300 years. Again, he made it his privilege to please God and not just men. To him, it was far more important to do that. It's also recorded for us where, you know, many have said as well 
concerning in Genesis in uh, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. If you remember the parable of the talents, where Jesus told this parable of the talents. And he gave each one things to do when he left. Each one was given talents. One was given two talents, one was given five talents, and the other one was given one talent. After a long time, the master returned, and he said to come. The man who received five talents brought five others. And the master, which is Jesus, of course, says, you have, you, you, you entrust, he told Jesus, says, you have entrusted me with five talents. See, I gave more. And Jesus replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. The person with the two talents, the same thing, he came before him. He, and again, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. But the one who had the one talent, he was not as faithful. He did not do anything with it. And in here, it's, it, here the master, of course, Jesus says, You wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with bankers, and then I would have returned, and I would, and I would have received interest with it. Take the talent from this one and give it to the one who has a tenth. For everyone who has more, everyone who has will be given more, and he who has an abundance. And then at the end it says, throw this worthless servant out into the darkness, whether it be weeping and gnashing of teeth. See, it pleased Enoch to walk with God and to do the things of God when he lived in a world, I'm not going to say similar to what we live in, but we do live in a world today where God is not first and foremost. We see many, 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 many un ungodly things taking place and happening, and many things take place with people that are not godly. Now, we're fortunate today. I think Enoch and his family and maybe a few others were just the very few that did. Today we have each other and we have other people as well that we can look to and that we can uh, lean upon and that we can help each other in times where we deal with certain things, but it's by our faith that helps us to endure more than anything. And today you need to have faith in God through Jesus Christ in order to continue on, in order to, to please God as well. Again, I, I just think about it and look down, and God looked down and he says, well done, Enoch, my good and faithful servant in the midst of what he was dealing with and what was taking place. And then the last thing, coming from Jude, that big old book of Jude, and that's found right before Revelation, it's one whole chapter. And in Jude 14 and 15 and 16, Enoch preached God's word. Notice what it says from the book of Jude in the New Testament. Enoch, the seventh from Abraham, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly ways and in all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men were grumblers, fault finders. They follow their own evil devices. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantages. Did you notice how many times it was said in here of ungodly people and ungodly acts and ungodly things that were being done here? In a society that Enoch was growing up in, it was rapidly being polluted and destroyed by sin, rapidly. They were doing many ungodly things that was not appropriate and God was not happy with. Again, you go back to Genesis chapter six, remember, it grieved God when he saw what the people were doing in Noah's day, but I'm sure it grieved him as well in Enoch's day as well, because it was cultivating, it was just building up and building up and keeping on. Enoch, here we see, he served as both a prophet 
and a preacher. He was announcing the coming judgment of God. And why did he do it? Is it possible that he did this because maybe, I'm not sure, if did God reveal to him what he was going to do in the time of Noah and the flood that was coming? Was he maybe told by God about the coming judgments and about, and, and he told everyone there what was going to happen, why? Because he was concerned. He just didn't sit down and fold his arms and said, you know what? Y'all continue doing what y'all doing. I'm waiting for the Lord to come and put judgment upon you. No, he went out and he told people. It said he prophesied. That's what it says here. It says he prophesied about these men. He told them what was going to be taking place maybe, what was going to happen. Because he was concerned and telling everyone what God was about to do. Was his preaching popular? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. We know Noah's preaching wasn't popular. Was his message accepted? I don't think so either. I don't think so. I think like in the days of Noah, he too was ignored or thought of as complete nonsense. How many of your friends or people you know of, or some of them maybe, think what we do is nonsense, or what we do is ridiculous, or doesn't hold any water? I met some who feel that way, and I'm sure it did in that day. You know, today we, people don't want to hear about judgment, sin, and hell. They don't want to hear about any of that. Instead, all they want to hear about is feel-good stories that won't save them. That's what they want to hear. Take nothing away. You want to hear about feel-good stories, then go on TV and you can hear Joel Osteen, he'll tell you some feel-good stories. I usually don't like to say things about it, but that's basically it. But we need to understand that here, one day, judgment will come. And many will face destruction. And I don't want to see anyone face destruction. I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell. Like the Lord, I too am concerned about people. Like the flood in Noah's day, so too, Jesus is coming. And His judgment is coming as well. And that's what we have to understand. And this is more feel good than you may think. In order to have a relationship with Jesus and know that we will escape the final judgment, that we will escape the pits of hell, that we will escape those things that are not meant or not were not meant for us, but yet are because of the sin in our life if we do not confess it and give it up to the Lord. That to me feels better to me than any other feel-good story, knowing that, hey, I will escape all of that because of Jesus dying on the cross for my sins and your sins as well. You know, Jesus related to the people. And he talked, you know, you, you read the Gospels, you will see where Jesus talked a lot about sin, hell, and judgment. He did a lot. Many people don't realize it. He did a lot. And he did it because he was concerned. And he wanted them. Listen, when you look at it, it will make you feel good to know that, hey, there is a way out. There's a way in which I know now that, hey, yes, I am a sinner in need of Jesus Christ. I am a sinner and need to do something about my own sin in my life. And that, hey, I can escape all that, but it only comes by having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, No one knows the day, the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it would be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, what were they doing? They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Even though they knew, probably from the preaching of Noah, they completely threw it out of their mind, and they thought it was nonsense. 
This is how it will be with the coming of man, the son of man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taking the other left. Two women will be grinding in the hand mill, one will be taking the other left. Therefore, keep watch, for you do not know what day your Lord will come. We do not know. But we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. The Lord has recorded all of ungodly deeds. He has recorded the motives and the hidden desires that people have committed. Remember, Hebrews says there is nothing that is hidden from the sight of God. Nothing. Even David thought he got away with adultery and murder. He figured, okay, I'm okay. I'm the king. I can do what I want. And God sent Nathan the prophet to him to tell him, what you did, you may have concealed, but I seen it. I seen everything that you have done. And instead of saying, David, saying, well, Lord, you know everybody else is doing it, so it doesn't really matter. David says, Lord, I have sinned against thee and against heaven. I did right. You see, that's where it begins. We have to take responsibility for our own sin and for what we are doing. Not blaming someone else or other people, and just because everybody else is doing it doesn't make it right. If it's all wrong, anyhow. We need to take responsibility. I don't think Enoch candy-coated the Word of God, but he told them for a reason. He told them to convict them of their sin. Why? So that they could repent. So that they can go to a God who cares, who loves, and who is willing to forgive. As David found out, our God is a compassionate God, a gracious God. He doesn't treat us as our sins of the earth. He forgives us. And all we have to do is come before Him and give it to Him. And He forgives us. Oh, sure, there may be repercussions. Sure, there, there may be consequences of some of the sins that we've done. Don't, don't, don't make light of that. Don't think that just because we come to Him and we won't be... Uh, be that, that we won't receive the consequences of our sins. We still may. But then there are a lot of other things that we do wrong that we haven't received the consequences of. And I'm speaking from experience as well. But the Lord is gracious. And again, the same is true today. Sin, judgment, and hell is a very, very serious matter. So serious that God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross for our sins. That's how serious it is. He gave his only begotten son with the promise that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. See, salvation comes through Jesus Christ. And remember what Jesus said. No one, no one comes unto the Father except through me. Salvation is found only in Jesus Christ, not in anything else. Don't ignore what is coming, but by faith, walk with God. Walk with Him and put your trust in Jesus Christ. And, get, and take the advice given to us throughout the Word of God. But even here in Jude, the latter parts of the verses that I've just read, here, we have this advice. Dear friends, remember what the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. And they said to you, in the last times, we're in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friend, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit and keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. Walk with God. And don't give up when you fall. Don't give up when you think things are hard and you think you're not walking as you should. Pray even harder for God to help you to increase your faith and to increase your strength and to give even more of the Holy Spirit 
that you are able to continue to walk as you journey in this life. The Christian walk is not easy. I don't think it was easy for Enoch. I don't think it was easy for Noah. And we know it wasn't easy for many others as well. But all things are possible with God. Again, the first place to start is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Confess your sin, repent of it, and come to Him. And He will uphold you and He will help you during those times. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we have heard your word, and as they have heard your word, if there's any here today whom you have spoken to in their hearts and have said unto them, come unto me, I pray that this time that they will come and they will give their heart and their life to you and that they will walk with you for these few years that we have in this life. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If God has spoken to you today, you can come, you want to come, you come. As we sing hymn number 309, Lord, I'm coming home. just say that in my message and I am sorry if I didn't mean to put any other preacher down like Joel Olsen or some of the others. I'm sure they're being led and being told as well. I don't know. So I am sorry. I, but there are too many preachers out there that they don't preach the Word of God as far as in the full content as far as the gospel. You know, it just seems like sometimes some of these people, they're preaching 
stories that are not helping anybody, maybe make people feel good, but yet what needs to be done is people need to be told they need to repent of their sin and turn to Jesus Christ. And that's what needs to be done. And we, we, this, is, this is what we see the evidence throughout our country. You know, it breaks my heart, and I know it breaks the Lord's heart to see people acting in the manner in which they are and talk in the manner in which they talk. And, and when they do this, is the evidence is that the Lord is not in their hearts or lives because the Lord's not going to promote that. Jesus never, ever, ever, you're going to read in the Gospels, he never protested the Roman government as bad and as ungodly as they were. He just went about preaching the word of God and told them what, they, what the people needed to do. And this is what's needed today. You know, we, let's, let's not kid ourselves. We live in a world today that's very ungodly and people are not right with God. This is what people need. They need to get right with God and they need to come before Him and please God. And the only way to do this is by having Christ in their hearts and their lives. And let's face it, I mean, I repeat myself, you look around, you see this, the evidence of people not having Jesus or not even the evidence there. And so, in a small way, hopefully, we can be an example to others when everybody else is not. Let's not act like other people, but let us act as we should. And I know sometimes we falter, sometimes we're like Peter, and sometimes we're like James and John and Matthew and some of the others, and sometimes we're like others as well. But let's not make an excuse and say, well, it's no big deal. It is a big deal. And it, when I do things that I know I shouldn't do, it breaks my heart and I know it breaks the Lord's heart. I go before him as well, and I do it daily, and we should as well. Walk with the Lord on a daily basis and ask him to help you, whatever things you may be going on in your life, and ask him to help you as you journey in his life as well. Again, I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. Again, if there are financial reports in the back. If you'd like to look at one or have one, you can take one in the back as well. And just be careful as you go about doing your daily activities and be careful, be safe, and uh, walk with the Lord as often as you can. May God bless. It is in closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done for us. And Father, thanking you because you're going to continue doing for us. You're going to watch over us. Lord, I pray that each and every one leaves us out today knowing and feeling confidence in you, trusting holy in you. I pray, Lord, that you'll bring us back to worship again together. Thank you. Watch over all of us. In our son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.